Hi, student. Back to our cook RT again. Uh, this series is going to be about Math 3, which is one of the course of our engineering school at KMTL. And uh, what I'm going to talk is about our chapter 15, is critical points, local extrema, and setter points. And the French textbook is multivariable, 6th edition. And I also post my uh, lecture note on the link, just right here. Right? So uh, you can go and then uh, uh, download just for your future use. That is right here. OK, so uh, let's get started. I my lecture notes here. I'll have a total of nine pages, and uh, this is also going to be a benefit for students who uh, want to uh, learn how to uh, you know speak and uh, listen in English or improve your English. So now uh, let's get it started. Let's get it quite points local extrema and setter points so uh, many students have some uh, problems or difficulty you know to understand about how to fire a relative or maximum or minimum point and in this case we're going to talk about uh, multivariables these are let's say uh, when you have um, usually you have uh, only one variable right in the term of y equal to or f that uh, function depend on only x but uh, for this case you're going to talk about multivariables or in the term of z which is uh, going to be the function in the term of x and y or oh, it's going to get uh, to be more complicated so what we're going to do we just refer to uh, the simple one on the single variable of y equal to fx. Well, uh, when you uh, want to find a uh, uh, maximum point or minimum point, or in the term when you start, you have like function fx equal to y, to find a minimum or maximum point, you know exactly that uh, you have to differentiate this one with respect to uh, x, right? And uh, you're going to have uh, something uh, we call slope and for the maximum point or minimum point you know that the plot or is going to uh, you know turn around so uh, at the maximum or minimum point it's going to keep the slope to be uh, zero so you can find uh, divide by the x equal to zero which you don't know is going to be the maximum or minimum point the next step that you need to do is that if you are take a look at the first plot that's give you the maximum point when you do differentiate divide by the x you go to zero and then you solve for you know x zero and then you substitute x zero into a function of x you're going to give you a y zero and then uh, if you take a look on the right of your critical point you notice that this is to give you uh, the negative uh, slope, right? And if you take a look on the left of your uh, critical point, or x0, zero, y0, zero, it's going to give you uh, uh, the positive slope, like this one. And if you differentiate uh, this there again with respect to x, you're going to see uh, how your slope change when you are x increasing or you move x from the left to the right you can see that you have to uh, put the negative number minus uh, the positive number right and in this case you know it's going to give you uh, the negative number so let's say uh, if you differentiate you know uh, function of x with uh, respect to x you know twice and you give the result to be a negative number that means you get the, the maximum point 
and sometimes when you differentiate this one here you don't have only a constant number negative constant number but sometimes in the term of uh, x what you need to do you just like plug in there you know x0 into that uh, d2y by the x square and see that you get a positive number or a negative number okay so in conclusion if you uh, do second derivative of the function fx uh, with respect to x and if it gives you uh, the negative number that means you get the maximum point and uh, on the way around and you have a uh, differentiate second derivative of function fy with respect to x and finally it gives you the positive number that means you give you uh, the minimum um, point of the plot okay so that's just refer to uh, the basic idea about how to find the maximum or minimum point now uh, let's move to our uh, multivariable as I mentioned earlier you have a function z that's uh, depend on uh, x and y you are do the same thing but what you need to do is that the first you need to uh, differentiate the function f x y with respect to x and make it equal to zero to find x zero or you know you are looking for the critical point x zero and y zero and the second step is that you differentiate the function of x and y with respect to y and make it equal to zero and you solve for y zero uh, let's take a look at the example here even have the function f x y equal to x squared plus uh, y squared and or simply this uh, become z equal to x squared plus y squared it's just a circular equation right and uh, we take a look at this one here um, this is become your radius is the become square root z okay so at your here you know that when x is equal to zero y equal to zero your radius is zero so this is your also critical point and then when uh, x increasing or even uh, decreasing it doesn't matter because uh, it become positive number or negative number it's always give you a positive number so it's never the f z is never be a negative number and the minimum a value of z is zero right the same thing as y increasing or decreasing they always give you a positive number so let's keep uh, make a z increasing so you have the radius is like uh, increasing so that's why I have the top view here you have our at x equal to 0 y equal to 0 you have no radius or radius becomes 0 when x increasing y increasing the radius of your circle is increasing for the front view here as I mentioned uh, z never become a negative number so it's going to uh, that way to the positive z and in conclusion this function give you uh, the minimum uh, local point or local minimum okay so this is just a good start to uh, warm you up now uh, let's take a look at the page number two I'm going to make our conclusion again when you have a more complicated function and not simple function for example if you have uh, fxy equal to ax squared plus bxy plus cy squared or the maximum power of x is 2 the maximum power of x is 2 and you also have the term x multiplied by y what are we going to do we have to analyze you know the function uh, to see if it give you the minimum or local or local minimum or local maximum you know you have to uh, uh, find out so you do the same thing you can start with the differentiate you know the function fxy with respect to x or I use the symbol fx and uh, xy I differentiate you know this equation let's give you a 2ax plus by and also you do uh, differentiate 
fxy with respect to y and I use the symbol fy x y here and that's give you a bx plus 2y and from these two equation you make it equal to 0 to solve for x0 and y0 or your critical point this can be uh, give you one critical point or more than one critical point so uh, from uh, the above equation here I rearrange the equation I have uh, a multiplied by x squared plus b over a x y plus c over a y squared and then uh, you rearrange the term um, you want to make this one into form of uh, x plus b over 2ay squared and you have uh, to have to subtract you know this term because you don't have this term before right so I subtract uh, this term you know out which is the b square y square 4 a square and this term will still uh, be the same because it's you get it from here now uh, finally you're going to have the form of z from the function here you rearrange the term and you end up with uh, this term a multiplied by x plus b over 2ay square plus 4ac minus b square divided by 4a square multiplied by y square and we will call this term as d which is the, the condition to see uh, is the functions give you a local minimum or local maximum or you know something else why we put our uh, uh, why we focus on uh, this term because the, if you take a look at the plot um, if you have the e equation in the form of uh, y equal to x squared plus dy squared this is we call paraboloid and if uh, the coefficient in front of y squared become negative it's something more likely to be uh, hyperbolic you look back actually you studied it from high school so let's pick up you know d equal to 4ac minus b squared and a you have a here it's going to tell you uh, the functions give you a local minimum or local maximum or you know something else well uh, for case number one if you have d greater than zero you have the uh, coefficient in front of y square to be a positive so it's more likely to be paraboloid right and that's give you or either uh, give you maximum or minimum now what you need to uh, do is that you have to take a look at a in case of a is become a uh, negative you take a look at this term so that's mean your z is what it can be only negative number right because this term is like square it's never becomes a uh, negative number and also uh, this one is greater than zero or is positive right and this term never become a negative number so you add them up you have a positive number but you multiply by a negative number so that means your z is never become a you know like um, a positive number you set up you know like uh, this is your x this is your y and this is your z so your plot has to look like this so that's why it's give you the maximum and become upside down or polaroid the same thing if you have our a is greater than zero this means this is all positive number and z is the with a is a positive number z never become a uh, negative number it's become only positive number so that's mean uh, it's gonna you know go up to uh, the positive z direction so that's why it gives you the minimum uh, or local minimum right so that's for the case of d is greater than zero and now let's take a look at in the case of d uh, less than uh, zero what happened 
take a look at this one here it's going to be the case of hyperbolic so this is what we call our center point if you have the plot look like this one and the last one is when you have our d equal to zero what happened uh, it's going to give you a polaric cylinder you have the plot look like this okay so uh, just to uh, get better picture we are uh, uh, take a look you know uh, something else now uh, let's move on as I mentioned earlier you have when you take a look at the function of the single variable you want to make decision if this uh, plot gives you the maximum or the minimum point you simply do the second derivative of y with respect to x and uh, consider if you get give you uh, the positive number or the negative number or the positive number and then uh, for this case you are consider d this is for multivariable right you have f x y you are consider d if it's become uh, it's greater than zero or less than zero or equal to zero because there you start with the, this function and you rearrange the term so you have d actually in the term of the coefficient in front of x you know square and also c the coefficient in front of y square and also b the coefficient in front of um, x multiplied by y and now they are another way you know to analyze you know the function you can do the same thing as you know differentiate function with respect to x with respect to y which I will uh, explain you know uh, now so uh, you take a look at for the single variable talking about Taylor series expansion around point A you can expand function fx in the term of uh, f you plug in a to the function fx and then you differentiate uh, the f with respect to x and you plug in a to find f prime a and don't forget to uh, multiply by x minus a you know around point a that you want to expand divide by one factorial and then plus the second derivative of the function of a and then you multiply by x minus a square divided by 2 factorial and plus uh, the third derivative of the function and you pack in a and multiply by x minus a to the cube and divide by 3 factorial or you can write in the term of the summation n equal to 0 to infinity uh, f n of a divided by n factorial multiplied by x minus a to the power n same thing as there if you want to consider you want to expand the function f x y around the critical point 0 0 you do the same thing and uh, before this, to find the critical point, you differentiate uh, the function with respect to x, and you make it equal to zero, right? And you differentiate uh, the function with respect to y, and make it equal to zero, and you solve, you know, two equations to find x zero and y zero. Now, uh, from this uh, concept. You have x y is about f equal f zero zero plus one over two. 
you know you just like copy from this one here you just you know expand the function so you end up you know with this equation and then if you want to find the delta fxy you simply move f0 zero, 0 to the left that's what I have right here and you have the rest by approximation you, know, you ignore you know the rest you know of the term and then uh, you uh, rearrange the term and then compare to the previous you know, uh, page we have what we have uh, we consider D right in the case of uh, it's greater than 0 or less than 0 before this we have uh, fxy equal to what a x square what plus b x y right and then what plus c y square right okay um so for this one i have c y square right and then you compare uh, you know the equation uh, actually i have right here you know exactly that your a which is the coefficient in front of x square is equal to 1 over 2 f x x and 0 0 and the coefficient b is equal to f x y of 0 and 0 and then the coefficient c is simply equal to 1 over 2 f y y 0 and 0 we do the same thing as the, the technique you know that we are used to analyze local minimum or local maximum or something else so finally you have our d equal to 4ac minus b square just like the previous page you just plug in our a plug in c in the term of you know the second derivative of function with respect to x and the second derivative of the function with respect to y and then uh, the derivative of the function of f you know with respect to x and uh, with respect to y let's give you d and in that case you know you can uh, consider you know the case of local minimum or local maximum as the same as the previous you know way that we did before okay if you still confused you get back to the page number uh, two here you have in the case of d is greater than zero in the case of d less than zero or if d equal to zero so uh, that's why I have here you can start with the d greater than zero um, it can be either maximum or minimum right and you consider only f x x if it's greater than zero it's give you local minimum because you take a look at the second derivative you can see here uh, how the slope change this means uh, you have the critical point here at uh, x0 y0 you take a look at the right of the plot your slope is positive number you take a look at the left of your critical point you get the slope become negative so the slope change from positive to a uh, negative so a uh, positive minus uh, negative number is give you positive so this is give you a uh, f x x is greater than zero it's, that's give you a local minimum and also the same thing if your f x x the second derivative of the function f with respect to x at the critical point x0 y0 is give you uh, uh, the value less than uh, 0 
it's also give you local minimum maximum sorry because you can see how the you know the slope change on the right of your critical point the slope is negative number and on the left of your critical point is give you a positive number so your slope change or the second derivative of the function is give you a negative number this means it gives you the maximum number uh, sorry local minimum right? same thing as d less than zero is give you a set of point and if d equal to zero or the above possible as well as none of above this can be your mi local minimum local maximum or none of these okay uh, to get better features let's take a look at some uh, examples here if I have function z or if x y equal to y square plus x y plus y square exactly just like we have our the function in the term of a x square plus b x y plus c y square right? in this case you have a equal to 1 equal to b equal to c and equal to 1 now you consider you find d I have d become 3 so it's become the case d is greater than 0 or it can give you a local minimum or a local maximum so what you have to do next well you need to consider a right as I mentioned earlier if a is greater than 0 this gives you a local minimum because your a is positive number here because you rearrange the term you just still remember z equal to what a multiplied by the whole thing right you have something here x um, square and then uh, plus d right, divided by something I don't remember so you have y you know square for this term become uh, d become positive so it's give you positive they are the positive number and when a is as greater than zero your z never be uh, you know like decreasing so it's going to the positive z direction because they are positive number right this is square this is square positive number and a also positive number z never be a negative number so it gives you a local minimum and if a is, uh, is less than zero it gives you uh, the maximum uh, local maximum okay so uh, I do uh, you know another ways right, just to show you make you uh, more clearly understand you pick up the equation z equal to x square plus x y plus y square you rearrange them you have x plus y over 2 square yes. and then uh, you need to subtract y square over 4 because you don't have this term before and y square is still the same and uh, you add this term up give you a 3 over 4 y square which is equal to z they all always give you the positive number right it's never become negative number and the smallest number is can be only zero because this is square and this is square that's mean when x increases y increases your z also increases so that's why you have uh, the local minimum here next okay we're going to apply the technique that we discussed you know earlier in the term of our differentiator of you know the function you start with function f x y equal to y square plus x y plus y square the first step you need to find a critical point right so you differentiate the function with respect to x and make it equal to zero to differentiate this equation you know with respect to x you end up with 2x plus y 
and also you differentiate the function with respect to y uh, you end up with uh, x plus 2y and you make it equal to 0 to find critical point you need to find uh, to solve for equation to solve for x and y right? so I have equation number 1 and equation number 2 so I want to find x first I multiply you know 2 to the equation number 1 so it can have the same coefficient in front of y so from equation 1 I have 4x plus 2y and I want to get rid of y I simply subtract equation 3 by equation 2 so your 2y will cancel out and you end up with the 4x minus x which is 3x or x equal to 0 and you substitute x back to equation either number 1 or number 2 this gives you your y equal to 0 that means you get a critical point at 0 and 0 so uh, this means uh, as I you know uh, explained earlier here you have critical point at 0 0 and your uh, z never becomes negative number the minimum of z is 0 and then start increasing with x and y increasing or decreasing because they are on the term of uh, you know square like this okay uh, let's see another example here. you have more complicated function f x y equal to 1 over 2 x square plus 3 y to the cube plus 9 y square minus 3 x y plus 9 y minus 9 x so you follow you know the steps below to find local minimum or local maximum the first step is that you find a critical point x0 and y0 you simply differentiate the function with respect to x and make it equal to 0 and then you differentiate function f x y with respect to y and make it equal to 0 and you solve for x and y you get a critical point the next step you need to check for d because this is more complicated function is not in the term of a x square plus what b x y plus c y square right? it's not in uh, the simple form so you need to you need to help up uh, the second derivative the function with respect to x the second derivative of the function with respect to y and also uh, differentiate the function of x followed by the differentiate you know the function with respect to y and then to see your d is greater than 0 or less than 0 or equal to 0 and if the uh, is greater than 0 it can give you the maximum local minimum or the local maximums and the next step you need to consider fxx if it's a positive number, it gives you the minimum, local minimum, right? And if x uh, gives you uh, the uh, negative number, that's give that's become a local maximum. And also, you check for if you know x zero y zero. You just plug in the critical point to the function of x, if apply, just to uh, you know for more analysis okay we let's start with the step number one you differentiate the function you know this is uh, you are looking for the critical point you differentiate function f you know with respect to x and make it equal to zero so I end up with uh, x minus 3y minus 9 equal to zero and also you do the same thing differentiate you know the function with respect to y you end up with 9 uh, y square plus 18y minus 3x plus 9 equal to 0 yeah. so e equation you know to find for x and y so from 1 I rearrange the equation I have x equal to 3y plus 9 and then you substitute x into 2 because you have x right here
so uh, this is my 3y minus 9 actually it's x right but I uh, simplify the equation you know I divide the whole equation by uh, 3 because they have 3 as the common right, term and then uh, you rearrange the term you divide the whole thing by 3 you have y square minus 2y and uh, I'm sorry and this is the 3y right so I have only y left and negative 9 plus 3 is give you negative 6 you divide by 3 is give you a negative 2 that's equal to 0 so you have the term y plus 2 multiplied by y minus 1 equal to 0 that's mean y equal to negative 2 and y equal to positive 1 so you have two critical points when y equal to negative 2 you can plug in or uh, you know into the equation here so when y equal to negative 2 this is negative 6 right plus 9 this give you x become 3 and if y equal to 1 this give you uh, x 12 so you have two critical points 3 negative 2 12 and 1 okay the second step you need to check for d right? to see if it's greater than 0 or less than 0 or equal to 0 it's just like do the second derivative of the function with respect to x uh, I pick up or uh, you have divide by the x equal to uh, x minus 3y minus 9 equal to 0 oh, sorry we don't need to pick up 0 the first derivative with function with respect, with respect to x is x minus 3y minus 9 that's what I have here so it gives you what? 1 right? now for second derivative of y uh, sorry second derivative of the function with respect to y you pick up this one you don't need to pick up this otherwise it's going to give you the wrong answer because you don't care about you know e equal to zero so uh, you bring that down here to uh, to uh, differentiate again you know uh, with respect to y Let's give you 18y plus 18. Now you take a look at the first critical point, 3 and negative 2. If x, x 3, negative 2, let's give you 1. If y, y, 3, negative 2, let's give you negative 18. And then uh, if x, y, let's give you a negative 3. Right? You can work this out by yourself. This is your pick up uh, differentiate the function with respect to x first so to get this one here and then you do again the second derivative with respect to y right? so you have negative 3 left right? now you can consider your So uh, d equal to f x x uh, multiplied by f y y minus f x y square. f x x you have one. f y y at y equal to negative two. You get negative eighteen. f x y is negative three, right? So it become uh, uh, negative three square. Doesn't matter. It can also give you a positive, but you have the negative sign in front of this one you have a negative 27 so your d is less than 0 is give you a set of point instead of a local minimum or a local maximum now take a look at the critical point at 12 and 2 and 1 you do the same thing you have x is equal to 1 if x y to be still the same negative 3 but if a y y you 
substitute y equal to 1 into that second derivative of the function with respect to y get 36 so your d is become 27 is greater than 0 now you need to consider is give you a local minimum or local maximum mentioned earlier you just consider fxx or the second derivative of the function with respect to x it's enough that it's give you uh, the positive number or it's greater than 1 so that means it gives you local minimum right? the chain of your slope from positive to negative you know it's give you positive number okay so this is the how you are analyze you know the function in the term of uh, it's giving you a local minimum or local maximum now uh, let's see more our uh, example this one show you about uh, the function that also give you a local minimum or maximum or neither of them you have the equation here a little bit complicated right for this you have uh, it's not in the form of ax square plus what b xy and then plus c square right cy square sorry it's not in the form of this because the maximum power of y is 3 so you need to help up or uh, you know uh, the differentiator of the function as we did in the previous you know, example the first step you need to look for critical points you simply differentiate the function with respect to x and respect to y and make it equal to 0 and you solve for x and y the first equation you have x equal to y the second equation you have x equal to y square and then you just plug in x equal to y plug in y here and you rearrange the equation you have y multiplied by y minus 1 equal to 0 so that's mean uh, your y equal to 0 and 1 same at x because x equal to y right? so you have two critical points at x uh, 0 y 0 and then x equal to 1 and y equal to 1 now the second step you check for d right? this is the standard form so what you need to do is to uh, do the differentiate okay so you have our uh, what if x x equal to 24 fy equal to 48y and fxy equal to uh, negative 24 because the, you pick up this one right looking for f x x second derivative of the function with respect to x so you have 24 eh? sorry second derivative of the function with respect to y um, you have a 48 y right and uh, you differentiate the function with respect to x followed by the differentiate of the function with respect to y you end up with a negative 24 right? so that's why it, I have you know all the number right here 24 48y and uh, negative 24 so you can find your d equal to uh, fxx 24 fyy at critical point zero zero you have zero right y equal to zero and then fxy square is the negative twenty four square this gives you a negative number so it gives you a uh, set of point or neither local maximum or nor uh, local minimum now at the critical point at one one you are have fxx equal to 24 you have fyy 
you plug in y equal to 1 so you have 48 multiplied by 1 and then minus fxy which is negative 24 squ square this gives you a positive number so it's either local maximum or local minimum the next step you need to consider you need to consider you know second derivative of the function with respect to x so you end up with the second derivative of fx x equal to 24 so it's greater than 0 that means it gives you a local minimum right okay another example your function f x equal to x square minus two x plus y square minus four y plus five. Okay, one way I do this, I, I one way I analyze the problem, I rearrange the term. Right? I pick up this, and I need one way right? to make it to be x minus one square. So uh, I have, uh, I need to minus one because I don't. I didn't have a uh, one before, eh? and you keep you know the term the same. So minus one, go to five. This give you four. You have a uh, y minus two square. Actually, this is the circle equation, right? X square plus y square equal to z. And actually, your radius is become uh, square root z, right? And you not can notice that z or function never become a negative number. And your critical point is at one and two. The minimum value of function is zero, and is increasing in the positive z direction. It obviously does this give you the minimum uh, local minimum, right? Give you a minimum point. Now you want to uh, apply, you know, the tech, the previous technique. You can do the same thing. So I want to show you, you know, many ways, you know, to analyze the problems. Um, you do the same thing. Differentiate the function with respect to x and make it equal to zero. And uh, differentiate the function with respect to y, make it equal to zero. And you solve for x and y have our x equal to 1 and 2 so I have the critical point at 1 2 right? just like the previous here I just differentiate the you know the the function with respect to x and with respect to y the next step is check for D right you have to find you have to find the term. You have to find the term. You have to find the term. Now you have f x x y equal to two x minus two. You need to do the second derivative of f. You know with respect to x, right? So you have two left. Same thing as there. You have to do the second derivative of the function with respect to y. You differentiate this again with respect to y. This gives you two. Right? And uh, for f x y, you need to differentiate this one by with respect to y, and that's give you zero. So your d is what f x x equal to two, f y y is equal to two, f x y equal to zero. This give you four. D is greater than zero. Okay, that means it can either give you a local minimum or local maximum. Now step three, you need to check for f x x or the second derivative of the function with respect to x, right? And you already have here f x x equal to two, right? At the critical point, or oh, it's greater than zero, so it gives you local minimum. Okay, the last page. You have the function f x y equal to negative or uh, square root x square y square if you are uh, take a look at this quick you know this term is positive number and you have the negative sign you know in front of you know this term so your z is never be a positive number 
is always negative number and the minimum can be a zero right when x equal to zero y equal to zero so you know exactly that's give you a, the maximum you know point or local maximum or if you just square the function here or you have z square equal to y square plus y square this is a circle equation right you see all radius increasing with x increasing or decreasing it doesn't matter x become positive number or negative number they all give you a what at a positive number right because it's square same as y so that's give you local ma uh, maximum or if you want to, to, to apply the technique before, you know, you need to differentiate, you know, the function f, you know, with respect to x, and differentiate the function with respect to y, and make it equal to zero to find critical point. And also give you a critical point at the zero zero. Sometimes we see like, hey, you know, like x and y cannot be zero, right? because not allowed but in this case you know we just take a look at close to the critical point or close to the point zero and zero so we have no problem about it okay that's all about our how to find uh, the topic of our, the critical points local extrema and center points hopefully more or less you know it gives you the idea how to find you know relative or minimum and maximum you know uh, point okay thank you very much i'll see you uh, in the next uh, youtube